Today we are going to explore FM modulation in Biotech 3, a powerful technique for creating complex and expressive sounds. In the process, we'll design some futuristic sounds to demonstrate how this incredible feature works. First, let's very briefly explain what FM modulation is. FM stands for frequency modulation. It's a method of sound synthesis where the frequency of a waveform, called the carrier, is altered according to another waveform, called the modulator. Remember these terms, as we will reference them throughout the video. When we change the amplitude and frequency of the modulator, the harmonic content of the carrier is modified, resulting in harmonics and complex textures. Biotech 3 offers 11 algorithms based off classic FM synthesis models, similar to iconic synthesizers, like the Yamaha DX7. These algorithms determine exactly how the oscillators interact with each other. In FM synthesis, an algorithm defines the structure of the oscillators, determining which oscillators act as carriers and which act as modulators. To clarify, carriers emit the final sound and modulators affect the frequency of the carriers. The first and default biotech algorithm is the only one that does not offer FM. As you can see in the graph, there is no oscillator working as a modulator. We'll need to select the second algorithm to find this feature. Once selected, we see that oscillator 4 will work as a modulator over oscillator 3, while oscillators 1 and 2 will work normally. Let's deactivate oscillator 1 and 2 and activate oscillators 3 and 4. Now listen to how, as the amplitude of the modulator increases, we get a harmonic change in the signal. Something we have to keep in mind in FM synthesis is that the frequency ratio between the modulator and the carrier is crucial in defining the resulting timbre. For example, in an integer ratio, where the modulator is an exact multiple of the carrier, the result will be harmonic and tonal. A good use of this technique would be to create pads. Let's try it. Expand the oscillator 3 view and lower the symmetry control to around 50%. Now go to oscillator 4 via its corresponding tab. While playing, increase its volume control until you find a timbre you like. This will be enough. Let's edit the amplitude envelope, which by default is configured in envelope 4. Adjust its attack to about 1 second, and set the release to around 1.5 seconds. Now navigate to the unison module, and we'll quickly add two voices. Set the detune to around 30%. Then dial in a nice widespread. To create some space, navigate to the effects module and increase the mix of the reverb to about 30%. Another interesting ratio to explore is the subharmonic. This is where the modulator is again an integer, multiple, but set lower than the carrier. For example, this happens when we lower the modulator by one or more octaves relative to the carrier. This is great for creating dark and resonant sounds, also perfect for basses, drones, atmospheres, etc. To illustrate this, we'll create a bass sound. Create a new track in your DAW and load a second instance of Biotech. This time, we will use an envelope to control the amplitude of the modulator. Again, activate algorithm 2 from the common module. Then deactivate oscillator 1 and 2, and activate oscillators 3 and 4. Now we'll lower the modulator by one octave relative to the carrier, and we will completely lower the level of the modulator. Bring envelope 1 into view, and click to enter. Assign mode. We'll assign around 25% modulation to the amplitude of the modulator. Exit assign mode and we'll modify the envelope 
with a decay of around 400 milliseconds. Then, adjust its curve to about 25%. We now have our base. We also have non-integer ratios, where the modulator is not an exact multiple of the carrier. This will generate inharmonic partials, which create metallic, percussive, and more aggressive timbres. Let's see an example. First, duplicate this bass track in your DAW. As we already have the configuration set up, simply raise the modulator by a couple of octaves relative to the carrier. Now add two semitones to break the multiple relationship. Let's take a listen. There it is, a metallic percussive sound with a bell-like timbre. Let's add a bit more vibe. Navigate to the FX section, and we'll add some reverb and delay to taste. I like this. If you notice, I'm playing around octaves C3 and C4. Now listen to the sound being produced in octave C1. Wow! Without touching anything, we have a very cool percussive sound. I'm going to duplicate the track once again and use it as percussion in the loop I'll create. This loop will put together all of the elements we've worked on. I'm going to remove some effects as it's a little much when played together. And that's it. We now have four FM design tracks ready for use in our loop. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let us know in the comments what other sounds you'd like to learn. See you in the next video.